Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video, I failed the lunar impactor and orbit contracts because I didn't put a Cumunitron 16 on. Hopefully we will do better on this particular video. I do actually want to try and see if we can make something that could land on the moon. The thing about the lunar impactor contract here, as opposed to the way it is in RP1, is that you just have to crash into it. There's no minimum speed. In RP1, there's a minimum speed. But here we just have to crash into it. So, I mean, there's a good reason for why there ought to be a minimum, minimum speed. Uh, but we may take advantage of that to try and simulate a soft landing, but then smack into it. But can we do that with a 40-ton pad is the question. With our existing pad, will we have enough? The reason why I think this is possible is because our upper stage right now has 1,935 uh, in theory. It never seems to give me that. So if we up that a little bit, maybe we could be in good shape. Now we also have the one kilonewton thruster that has the full hypergolic bipropellant stuff instead of just the ma propellant one. So we'll unlock that. That's bigger, but uh, and. It's a good question whether we need it to be bigger. Uh, maybe we... Do. I mean, the burn time is really long here with this one. And, you know, redundancy could be good. See, like a 30-minute burn time might be too much. But then this is very awkward. But it is just smacking into the moon. We have the Aerozine and UDMH options. They're, I set them to be basically the same, so... Or exactly the same. Three minutes of burn time is a little bit low, so but we haven't put the commutatron yet. Let's remember the commutatron. Or, you know what, why don't we try one of these other antennae that I made for the CubeSat so it isn't sticking out too much. Got a battery right on top there, let's put this on top instead. This is a little springy antenna, but we just want an S-band version, that's all. I don't know if uh, one of these helix antennae can do S-band or not, I'm not sure. My knowledge of these bands is limited. Okay, well, it seems to be able to communicate from the moon with this 30 decibel milliwatt thing. So, we'll just keep it to that. I don't think it reduces our power very much either way, so... The idle power consumption is basically the same as the active power consumption. Let's shove this battery in here instead. Well, instead of this format, we could go with having multiple of the little 100 newton ones. That'll cut down on the burn time. That's about what I would like. Do we have little thrusters that can use MHM on... Oh well, yeah, we've got these new thruster ports. Okay, so instead of these little guys, which can only do hydrazine, and that'll save us the need to have a separate hydrazine tank, we can have these, which can do MMH and... Just MMH and NTO? Are these MMH and NTO? These are MMH and Mon3. Well, gosh darn it. Um, these can only do MMH and NTO, not Mon3. Okay, well, let's see. Aerozine is Aerozine and NTO, so we'll use Aerozine. These are 40 Newton thrusters. They're meant for pods, but we'll use them here. It's fine. Oh, right. I don't have a central node like this. Well, hopefully we have a little girder segment that can do that. Oh, and a CubeSat structure would work. Modular girder segment. Can you be tweak scaled down? Okay, so that's 3,000 meters per second. We should be able to capture into orbit around the moon and then land with that. That's the theory. I don't think the thrust imbalance is severe here compared to in RP1, but I'm not sure. Okay, but we'll need a bigger rocket. We've lost some delta V here. What we're looking for is 9,500 to get to orbit, let's say, uh, 3,200 to transfer, so 12,700, and then 800 to capture, 13,500, and then another 2,000 to land. Uh, so we want 16,500 or something along those lines, maybe some buffer, even though those calculations already had buffer. 
So, we need 2,000 more, let's say. Do we have any new engines that could be nice? This kerosene and oxygen, this is part of the Sure Strut engine pack. It will make me feel a little bit less guilty than the ether engine does. Uh, but it's much more powerful. I think we need something smaller. This one is just animation mon 3, 12 kilonewtons. I think we could probably use that here and make a bigger stage. That's less efficiency than the other one. It's a little bit OP for here. Maybe the one kilonewton thruster, just a bunch of them. Yeah, but I do want a center node, so let's put let's put five of them. <laughs> it's overdoing it a little bit. And once again, well, yeah, we'll use Arizine. We'll use Arizine. Same reason these thrusters work with Arizine. Oh, there is an animation mod three one. Oh, well, that was just the default. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I prefer animation mod three. Okay, everything back to animation mod three. It's just used modernly. Uh, Arizine doesn't get used much anymore, it seems. So it'll just be a better fit. Let's go to the stock size, 1.25. And here, instead of using... Oh gosh, what happened? Where did that go? Uh-oh, where did that go? Oh no, whiff has gone to 10,000 meters. Undo, undo. Okay, well it's gone, but now we're not 10,000 meters, so it's okay, I think. I don't know where it attached to, to make us 10,000 meters, but it's gone. Okay, so instead of this engine, we're going to use the Methalox one. Well, we could use this kerosene one, but... This pressure-fed methalox one. Well, the kerosene one will be better, so we don't have to have a pressure, a high-pressure tank. It's more expensive, though, not by much. Slightly less efficiency because it's kerosene instead of methane. But I think that'll be a good choice. So no more high pressure. Okay, and then we'll probably stick to the reavers. They've been good to us, and we've got a lot of data on them. Though, we've got a more powerful engine here. This one's kerosene and oxygen, too. It's got better vacuum ISP, but not so good sea level ISP. It's more like a middle stage. But that vacuum ISP is nice. Well, let's say we did use Reavers, and five of them. Well, that should do the trick. That's actually too much. Well, and also too heavy. Okay, we could probably make it thinner then. Still a lot of thrust weight ratio. Three? Three reavers? Or do we just go with the huge thrust weight ratio? Well, we can eke out some more delta V just because we're not at 40 tons yet. Eh, I mean why have less, really. That's a little bit less total than I wanted. Now again, we don't have the landing contract yet. We're just gonna plop this down. And ultimately, we could just have more of these little struts on the side to be our landing legs. Or we could unlock the micro landing strut. I think we can scale these down. Right? Yeah. Let's say I made them smallish. Yeah, why don't we try it? Yeah, let's put the landing legs too. Okay, so we even have landing legs. It is a kerosene, kerosene rocket. No, no funny business, no methane this time. No, I, I do like this sort of look, so we'll go with this. Well, it's still Reavers at the bottom, so I'll just call it Serenity 4. There's four engines, after all. Okay, well, it can still horribly go wrong, but we are going to try to land a probe on the moon. Saving. 
and 57 days, not bad. Let's try and build one. But we have many engines, and they can fail. Okay, we're here on the pad, and we are going to line up the moon. Let's target it. Oh, pretty close. Is it counting down or up? It's counting up. Gosh darn it. You know what? We'll launch now and we'll fix it. No SAS because we don't have the payload adapter. I should probably just for realism's sake have one. There's actually a CubeSat platform that has the SAS. It's a Star Tracker thing. But anyway, uh, throttle up and ignition. And launch. Much feistiness. We'll try and correct this on the fly maybe. I don't know if we can. Uh-oh. Micro landings. We can have landing gear failures like that? Um, I don't know. I got two messages already for the landing struts having failures. So. Oh, it should be through max Q. We are correcting the inclination now. Yeah, something. Uh, we'll have to tune down the landing gear failures with those scrap, I guess. Jeez. Where do they think we've got these things from? Yeah, I think that's all of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, really high G-forces. Okay, separation and ignition. There's a new engine. This SE2 2006, 2006. Fairing set before the G-forces get too high. Oh, before I forget, let me get the little S-band out. The helix antenna. Okay, continuing to clean up the messages. Yeah, one micro landing strut, two, three, four. All of them gone during the first stage. I don't know. Seems suspicious to me. Okay, we'll dispose of this stage. Up, oh, yeah, that'll be fine. All right, staging. Completing orbit. And shut down. Okay, so we are in orbit. We've got enough to transfer, it seems. And let's see how it works. It's just MHM Mon 3 now. Got 1.73 degrees though. Well, we can definitely see the 1.73 degrees there. Mid course adjustment will be necessary. Okay, well, it's already telling me the start burn is momentary, uh, momentarily, so. I mean, it's got to be a long burn with these guys. There's all the landing struts in red. Great. Okay, well, we might have to do the burn in two goes then. Because this is. Too soon. I mean, that is very radial, so we don't want to do that. Also comms. Let's not forget about comms, but it looks like we have a station there and a station there. Or we could be communicating to our Serenity 3 and it could be bouncing us. That could happen too. Okay, let's start burn here. At least the first of two burns. Okay, ignition. Whoa, bright. All plumes need to be fixed, don't worry. That will have to wait until I come back from my trip, though. By the time you see this video, I'll be back from the trip, though. Or close to it. Okay, we'll shut down at a four hour orbit for now and re replot this. Um. Don't know exactly how it's going, we'll see. Of course, this is just meant to smack into... Well, get into orbit and then smack into the moon for now. So... Landing... Isn't expected to happen and I'm not gonna make it happen, but we're gonna see how far off we are. So it's okay if we don't have enough for landing because we're not intending on it. Well, 
that's all except for the corrections, so... We're a little bit short in this stage, but yeah. Well, we got a bunch of stations right here. Well, that's the United States, so... Yes. Yes, we would. And... Ignition. Okay, well... Seems like we're getting a lot less LTV than we were expecting here. About 200 less, because when we plotted, we were we had about the right amount, but then we ended up with 200 less in this stage. Maybe it was the RCS, though. Okay, so... <laughs> it's the same plume, they're just... yeah, I'll work on it, I'll work on that, I promise. So if these are busted, when I press G... So what makes them busted exactly, oh scrap? Oh, maybe the sound. Because it hasn't stopped the sound. Okay. The sound keeps going. I guess. Okay, shut down for now. Okay, so... Um, see, it says repair remotely, so maybe that's good. But I'm still getting the sound. But maybe if I go to map... No, it's still there. Okay, well, I'll just apply a mid-course correction, and then for sake of viewers, I'll get out of the save and come back in. Go to the main menu and come back, and then maybe we won't have the sound, hopefully. Getting this into orbit and then smacking, smacking it into the moon is sort of sad, because we could use it as a comm set. But, contracts are contracts. Okay, we have a plot for the mid-course correction. And let's just sort of... Okay, the sound has stopped. I don't know what OS Scrap does to things sometimes, but... We're, we're okay for now. We've extended the landing leg somehow. They're still in red though. Oh, RCS port failure. We have some redundancy on that, because I put 12 ports instead of just uh, 8, but... We might want to tune them down a bit. They are 40 Newton thrusters, and these are just 100 Newton main engines. Okay, ignition. Yeah, we won't be able to make a safe landing. So good. <laughs> so good. But we'll be close. Okay, well... Lines are getting a little bit stretched, but it's okay. And we might as well prepare to make orbit here. Orbit retrograde. Yeah, we guzzle a lot of RCS just turning. We will need miniaturization to make smaller RCS ports. Smaller hypergolic RCS ports. We've got really tiny nitrogen ones. Okay, ignition. Yeah, I mean, obviously, our delta V is less than our orbital velocity. We're not going to, or surface velocity. So, no soft landing is possible. Well, we need some science. Well, gravity scan from Midlands. Okay, we have captured, and also we have transmitted the science. So, those two are done. We're just getting lower so that we can... Oh, we don't really need to go any lower. I think I see the situation here. We're going to end up with less. Though, again, this seems to be reading a little bit different than I expect. As we go along, I expect that the gap between that and that is going to increase a lot, even if I turn off the RCS and just spin stabilize. So, it's very suspicious, the delta V figures that I'm getting down there. Okay. Retrograde. And ignition. I'm sure our explosion will show up very nicely against the dark terrain of the moon. So, maybe this is for the best. Seems like that would be pretty decisive to me. Okay, here we go. First there. 
moons there. Okay. Definitely inside of Earth. Earth fully lit there. We're not going to try a landing burn or anything. We'll try a solid impact here. Come on. Okay. All done. All right. So that was very successful, but obviously not conducive to landing. So we need to adjust a few things back to Space Center. Based on my original Delta V estimate, we knew we were shading a little bit tight, but then again, it didn't seem like the numbers worked out. Maybe it was the amount that the RCS ports were using that caused us to have less, but still doesn't make me happy, but we'll add more. I don't know what to do about the landing struts. <laughs> um, safety rating, generation three. How do we make that better? I don't know. I'm going to increase the diameter of this. I feel like maybe we should just increase the diameter of this one too. We already have sort of a increase in diameter down below. Yeah, that has not helped the situation. Maybe, maybe not. Um, there's an optimal here somewhere. Right there. Ah. We're getting more out of the upper bit because we're going to waste a lot on the RCS, I, I'm assuming. There is this RCS block. That is 100 newtons, though, so too much for us. These are a little bit tighter. It's just one block that has the right ports, so maybe we should use that instead. Would it be cheaper? Not really cheaper. Eh, let's just leave these be. I should just nerf these. Or have fine controlled or something. Well, right now we've got 16,000, it says. Okay, um, what does that read? We've got 0.1 tons to work with here. I guess we should increase the second stage. Okay, that's too much. Let me get to 16,000. 16,000, all right, we'll take 16,000. We're at 39.992 tons. Okay, so this will be the improved Serenity 4. And naturally, we are going to pick up, well, maybe I should get Lunar Orbit at least. But we're not going to have the Impactor one. We're going to try for the uncrewed moon landing, and that gives us two years. Now we've got some money. That'll probably go partly to increase the launch pad size. R&D building still needs to be upgraded, otherwise we won't have the ability to unlock stuff above 100 technology. So this line. And that one's expensive. 800,000. Okay, it is April 3rd, 2003, and we're trying to land a probe on the surface of the moon with a less than 40 ton rocket, barely. Uh, well, it is just an overgrown CubeSat at the end of the day, but let's see if we can do it. Throttle up and ignition, and we lost an engine. <laughs> Uh, technically we could probably go with three engines, but all right, all right, oh, buzzkill. Uh, for the first time, uh, I think for the first time in the series, maybe, no, no, not for the first time in the series, for the first time in a long time, uh, Test Light has actually killed one of our engines on launch. And one of the Reaver engines at that, I think it is the first time for the Reaver engines. And yeah, let me just take them off and put a new one on. Or a new one multiplied by four. Okay, fresh one's on. Let's see. Oh wow, it takes 36 days for new engines. Well, I guess that's fair. I did put all four on instead of just replacing the messed up one. Okay, let's try this again. Throttle up and ignition. Got four and launch. And much thrust to weight ratio. I think after this episode, I want to get K 
Cape Canaveral HD in or something. Let's level up a little bit. Okay, high G-forces. And ignition of the SE-2006. Or I named the bloody thing and I still don't have an idea how to pronounce it. 2006, 2006, 2006. Anyway, fairing set. Unless I missed something, let me see. I think that was from the previous mission. I think it hasn't killed any landing lakes yet. Maybe we worked all that out last time. Uh oh, thrust loss. Well, okay, thrust loss is fine as long as we still have the specific impulse. That's okay. Even might help that we have a thrust loss at this point. Okay, once again, deorbiting that bit. Separation. Ignition. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Still short of what we need for the transfer there, uh, but. Uh, the next stage has ex extra this time, so it's okay. Let's keep an eye on it. 3,050. That's a healthy amount of time for an arrival. We might as well keep it to 100 kilometers there. So, we're expecting to have 61 meters per second left in this burn uh, when this stage is done. We'll see how much it is after the RCS turns us. Hey, okay, pointing at the node. I think this isn't too bad this time. Burn time 5 minutes and 43 seconds seems fine. Okay, 3052 there, so we're expecting to have 60 left. To do, I mean. It really already gave up a little. It's not much variation in thrust. These don't have the thrust variance thing, apparently. I didn't check comms particularly. Hopefully we'll be picking up over there. Anyway, we can run out of this stage and it'll be fine. But we should pick up Hawaii there. Yes, we have. We picked up Hawaii. Well, we'll have 214 left to do. That seems like a lot, but okay. Well, let's just keep that in mind for future missions. Whoa. <laughs> okay, again, I'll fix the plumes. Okay, this time the landing gear sound didn't keep going. Okay, uh, let's use RCS for the rest. Okay, 109, we have a very healthy 3,300 meters per second left. And we're not pointing at the sun though, so... Okay, let me try and turn without using too much thrust so that we don't knock things off. Ah, don't do that. Okay, we still have a periapsis over there. And we are spinning and pointing at the sun, basically. Okay, on we go. Okay, well, I think I'll just keep it at the 39 kilometers. It seems a bit tight, but... And time warp will probably be a little bit restricted. I think we'll be okay. Or the solar panels could short circuit. Well, we'll see about that. For now, it just seems like we have reduced power. Not that we can't get any power. Okay, here comes the moon. Oh, and actually we seem to have lost two batteries, but I didn't see the messages for those. Oh, but the CubeSat, that's not the battery. That's, that's one of the batteries, but I think those are the platforms that are built into the CubeSat. That includes the controller, control unit, so. And it includes one battery. Whoa, okay, don't do that. Okay, communication line weaker here. 
still okay. Well, 11 minutes, I guess we'll start. Ignition. Okay, we've captured. And so the orbital contract, oh, it, it wants something specific this time. So below 5,000 kilometers. Good thing I didn't get any lower than our current height because there is a minimum there too. We do also have to collect science. So new biome, well, there's a little bit left in Midlands. I guess I'll, oh wait, we just got lowlands, good times. Checking for those mass concentrations, you know, very important. Oh, I, I guess it didn't care about the 5,000, because we're not really at below 5,000 right now. I just shrug. I don't know. Okay. It, it seems happy. But I need to get into a nice orbit for a landing. Okay, well, this is probably pretty good. I mean... I guess we'll land around there-ish. Seems about right. Okay, around we go. Losing power on the dark side. Okay, we could land over here though. Maybe we should. It's nice and bigger. Yeah, I think we'll just try over here. Really skimming it close. Okay, ignition. Six minutes. But that's for all of it, and we don't need all of it. This doesn't look like it should tilt over. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, Sea of Tranquility. Good times. Thought as much. I didn't put the suicide burn count down here. Maybe I should. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Okay, yeah, this definitely did not um, tell me the right amount for how much Delta V we have, because there's no reason it should have taken that much do this burn. We shouldn't be that close to the surface velocity. There's something horribly wrong here. Right, I mean, we were going 1,600. It shouldn't cost 2,500. No matter how slow our deceleration, we weren't pointed that far away from retrograde here. There's something very wrong, I feel. Is something wrong with you guys? Doesn't seem like anything is wrong with you guys. But yeah, we're not getting that delta V at all. Now why is that? Please, uh, well, we're gonna smack into the surface, but we can't slow down anyway. Yep, if you got any idea, please do tell me, but we're, we have another impactor on our hands this time. It should have had enough delta V if it actually got the prescribed delta V. There's no fuel imbalance. Oh, that was actually a pretty good decomposition there. <laughs> oh. Is it trying to litho break? I think the solar panel colliders have turned it into a wheel, basically. This, it is not counting as a landing. Oh, I don't want to wait all day for it. It is slowing down slightly every time it bounces off the surface by one meter per second each time. I'm gonna just turn uh, fizz warp and see if we can. No, it's really not stopping like that. This is unexpected. Oh, 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 it's turned. Ah, okay. Finally made its demise. All right. Yeah, but the Delta V thing with those thrusters seems weird. 
And the previous stage wasn't all that great either. So I'll have to think about what's going on there. There was no good reason for us to not have enough Delta V for that landing, but I've landed on the moon many times and, you know, even the lunar module has to pitch up at least as much as we did. So, and have a, it had a long burn time too. And it had about the same sort of Delta V. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but I'll try and figure it out for now. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.